You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin. Except no substitute. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to an impromptu edition. I've assembled an Achtung Brains Trust to consider the big Millwall news of the weekend, which is the appointment of of Joe Edwards uh, from Chelsea's um, academy system, worked with the English national under-20 side. He's worked at Evan with Frank Lampard. Um, big news, he's the Millwall manager or head coach, I think is probably the best expression. Um, joining me today to consider the, the appointment and where it might take us after Saturday's disappointment, is a brains trust. I've got Neil Fissler. How are you, Neil? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Very, very pleasant on a Monday to be recording at lunchtime, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's civilised, mate, isn't it? It's nice. Um, also civilised. For the civilised comment, it's Harry Warren. H, how are you doing, mate? First time I've been called civilised in a while. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, quite nice. Mid, mid, mid-afternoon. Mid, midday, midday, yeah. Midday, midday. It's very nice. I've tried to fit in with Michael Avery's lunchtime. I always know he, he takes his lunch around about 12-ish. How are you doing, Michael? Mate, the uh, Joe Edwards tattoo is booked. <laughs> it will be across my back, just just below the one that's got Spackman, Lomas and uh, Holloway. So I'm hoping full-time lucky on the tattoo front. Come on, Joe Edwards. Do a, do a Nathan Jones. He had the creation of Adam across his back, apparently. We want the creation of Joe. Um, who, might, who knows what, it, what, the, what the future holds with, with our new um, 37-year-old head coach stroke I'm going to call him manager because I'm, I'm from an era where we had managers but gentlemen before we start speaking about matters uh, Edwards related we we have to mention the punditgames.co.uk question um Christmas is coming boys and we're selling we're in partnership we're in league with pundit games a wonderful quiz game Every time you spy a quiz game through punditgames.co.uk listeners select the Achtung will drop down and the Lions Food Hub gets a little little tickle for, for, for the sale, which is a good stuff. So anyway, I've got a teaser question. Here. I'm, I'm going to hope that you'll all get this one, but I'm also going to throw in a harder one, the Football League question. I think the Football League ones are really hard. So we're going to have a Champions League question, and we're going to have a Football League question. Answers at the end of today's conversation, chaps. Um, I'm hoping this one will be fairly straightforward. Um, Swedish football royalty, some 48 goals in the Champions League and with 11 domestic league titles from Holland, Italy, France and Spain. The Champions League that was always eluded in. One of football's biggest characters, he once said, John Carew, what John Carew can do with a football, I can do with an orange. He's played for, um, he's in the top scorers in the Champions League, so alongside Ronaldo, Messi, Aguero, Lewandowski, Gareth Bale, and this football royalty personality. That's question number one. Anyone don't get that one, I'll, I'll be amazed. Um, but I'm going to have a little tease just to show you the range of questions you get on this game, listeners. The football league questions are really, really tough, in my opinion. I would have struggled with this one until I saw the answer. This is a Nottingham Forest legend who tarnished his reputation at the sitting ground by signing for arch rivals Derby County in 2008. He went on to become a fan favourite at Celtic, scoring 64 goals in 147 games. So we've got um, Nottingham Forest from 2004 to 8, 32 goals, 138 appearances. Derby, uh, 2008 to 2011, 80 appearances, 21 goals. And then to Scotland, 147 uh, starts and 64 goals in Scotland. Uh, 12 appearances for the Scottish national team, two goals. We'll have the answer to those two questions later on. Punditgames.co.uk. Enough quizzing, gentlemen. We've got a new manager announced by uh, Richard Corley of South London Press on Saturday. New head coach, Joe Edwards. Michael, what do you make of the appointment, mate? How do you see this one? Do you know what? Um, I don't know too much about him per se. Um, I've obviously no. just know what everyone else has read about him, where he's been and all that kind of stuff. But... I'll be brutally honest with you, Nick. Up until Joe Edwards was um, announced or in discussion, I had no interest in the managerial um, merry-go-round that was circling around Mill Football Club. Um, you can say there's some good names out there, some more experienced names. Jones, Eustace, Walnut was chucked around a few times. Even even Lampard was thrown around occasionally, wasn't he? But yeah. there was just no one that, that inspired me that's really going to take us to any kind of level, that's really going to do well. Um, 
and I, I, I remember saying to you, you guys a lot, that I just wanted to see someone with just a bit fresher, new ideas, that's a little bit, you know, left of centre, in the centre, not politically, but, you know, when it comes to yeah, the yeah, normal yeah. target. Left field. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, left field. Um, and just be a little bit, just to spice it up a little bit, have something a bit different. Football's changing, football's evolving. The reason why, in the nicest way, I know these people are like the Joneses and Eustace. They're out of work. They're, they're out of work for a reason. Um, whatever that reason is, why, why why are we recruiting people who are out of work? Why why don't we go for like these these people who are already at either at clubs or in systems and and doing well and and obviously have, have built a bit of a name for themselves? Good appointment for me, Harry. I know we disagree with this slightly. Huge gamble. I'm not going to say it's not a huge gamble, especially for in the championship. But mm. sometimes sometimes with the old um, stick and twist thing, sometimes you've got to twist, didn't you? Because sticking's getting us nowhere. H, tell me, tell me your views. I know, I know you're not struck. Is that no, fair? No, I think, I think it's, I think it's the biggest gamble we could have made. I think it's the wrong time to gamble. You don't gamble mid-season, um, and, and I think I, I take all the points. He's been part of all these systems. He's been part, part uh, and I understand people are now going to be screaming about McKenna down at Ipswich. Um, the main reason, knowing what I know about it, switch comparing the two the two situations, they basically had enough of playing Mick McCarthy football and wanted to make a change in terms of their style of play. Um, they had a young squad anyway, um, and no transfer budget, so that's what they went for. So there is a slight, there's a slight uh, similarity between the two that we're fed up of playing rowit ball or seemingly, if you go by Twitter, which I don't think is the best uh, barometer of any social occasion. Um, and for me, the two more experienced names, I wouldn't have been bothered between Bill or or Jones, really, if I'm being honest. Um, main reason being is that I don't think Bill plays bad football and Jones has done, well, did uh, miraculous things with Luton, really. Um, but that being said, I'll get behind the new manager. I'd love to be... <laughs> I'd love for us to have made the greatest decision in in football history, and we we do a we do an eighty eight. But I I can't I can't see it unfortunately. But um, you know, it's a massive gamble. I suppose you've got to take your hat off to to JB Junior because presumably this is his vision because it's very un it's been very different to what we've done in the past. So you have to give him some credit that it's his ideas and he's running the club how he wants. I'd assume. Yeah. Because I can't see this being a, a a decision from the old guard, shall we say, that are involved in running our club day to day. So, yeah, I, I mean, I could be more harsh, but I've, I've kind of calmed down now. I, I, yeah. I'm just disappointed. I, it's not someone that I wanted out of the names linked. I, I suppose the three, I wouldn't have minded anyone out of the three that were front runners this time last week. Um, you know, that's me being honest. Neil, I mean, massive gamble. I don't. I think there's no one in and around the mill scene that will disagree with the the unknown quantity part of this appointment. But when I'm, I'm just looking at the Richard Corley report, and when you look at the the uh, the CV, so to speak, of Joe Edwards, he's got some big names in the mix there. I mean, he's worked with Jose Marino, Frank Lampard. People will laugh at, but he's an experienced player, if nothing else. Thomas Tuchel, who's now, I believe, managing Bayern Munich, isn't he? Um, and then the, the, the ranks at uh, the under-18s at Chelsea, uh, a youth cup uh, with the under-18s. His under-19 team were runners-up in the UEFA Youth League. He's been to Everton and he's in, in and around the England team. I did read that he was part of the Toulon tournament winning side of a couple of years ago for England. Um, he's got all the right ingredients. That doesn't necessarily make you um, a great manager, does it? But it's it's a good starting point. How do you see it, Neil? I think it's a very exciting. It's a very exciting appointment, if I'm honest. A brave one, a very brave one. I think it yeah. probably reflects the direction in which the club wants to go. They appointed Aldo, didn't they, as a football operations? Well, he's manager. director of football. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever the so, but I think what the club need to do. Now and it's not the club's strong point because they'll come out and they'll just give us a word salad interview that will be fifteen minutes of saying absolutely the square root of fuck all, yeah, as per normal. But they need to clearly define 
the structure of the club. They need to, yeah, they need to define what Aldo does, what Joe Edwards does. Is he just a head coach? What role does he play in the recruitment of players? Does he have a say in the recruitment of players? Or does Aldo and a, a, a player buying committee, which I think some clubs do have, I think Brentford have gone down that route, haven't they? I think right. Brighton have gone down that route, employing Tony Bloom's algorithms that he applies to betting. Very, very, very intelligent people and very, very intelligent systems, but they cost a lot of money. I can't imagine Millwall having the same kind of investment, but but they definitely need to define what the structure of the club is and what everybody's role is within that structure. Yeah, Does he just purely coach the players? Is that now the thing? Or does he get a bit of an input into which players he would like us to sign? Because he's obviously got a very, very good knowledge of young up-and-coming players. And I can see that that is a route that we're probably increasingly looking towards going down. I think absolutely, absolutely quite exciting. We're bringing through some very exciting players. I think it's an exciting appointment. I think it's one that's a big gamble, but they're they're obviously confident. They're obviously confident for whatever reason. We didn't appoint Beal. I didn't want Beal. I was anybody but Beal because I think he's got absolutely zero loyalty at all. And the way that when he's learning his job to walk straight out on QPR to go to Glasgow Rangers, I think was shocking. I think that Nathan Jones would have been an acceptable appointment, but you always get the impression that he's got his eye on the next gig. Mm. That, that if he'd have had half a decent season with us between now and the end of the season, would he have been having his eye on a job in the Premier League next summer? But so, yeah, but let's give him, yeah, but let's give him a chance. Let's not do what we normally do at Millwall, and Harry's just done, and that's almost write him off before he's even started. Yeah, let's give him, yeah, well, let's give him at least until. Uh, yeah, but are you referring to my fucker, my fucker oh, oh, Edwards bedsheet that I'm just? I was, I was just, I was just going to say, I'll give you a right to reply on it, H. But I'll, Michael, you had your, you had your, your hand up, mate. Um, what did you want to say on on the uh, the Edwards thing? I was just going to say, sort of similar to what what Neil was saying there when it says about like what roles you're going to have at a club and the head coach this and that. Like Mill will very much, and from everything you're hearing, it's he's he will be Mill's next head coach. Now, I know you can say that, you know, Rowick technically had that or he was on some sort of little bars at the bottom of the screens on Sky and BBC. But we were, from from my knowledge, we don't normally go for that sort of head coach role. And, and, and again, I think it's one of the rare times that I agree with you, Fizz, and don't agree with you, Harry. But it's just... I think I think the thing is is that football's quite stale at the moment, you know. Like and and the names that were mentioned apart from Edwards, as I said a minute ago, they're all stale. Maybe like you were saying there, Neil, where like it needs where the you know the board have had a look and had a think about it. They 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 want to go down this 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 route, which is a little bit more modern, you know, arguably a little bit more continental. And let's not forget as well, Nick, Nick you were saying about names he's he's worked for club wise before. Look at those contacts he's going to have. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not going to say that he's now going to sign the next up and come kid from Bayern Munich or the Bundesliga or anything like that. But it's a lot better than having contacts at Burton. Well, one of the, uh, Harry, I'll come to you in a second, mate. Um, stale is a word that that, that you use there, and I must admit, I've just literally listeners, um, I've literally just edited the the show uh, reaction from Saturday, and the number. I mean. All of us will, no, no, this is not going to come as a surprise, but a number of people mentioned the lack of quality in terms of the basics, controlling of the football, passing, you know, um, fitness to some level. Um, and stale thinking and stale attitudes and a stale approach to the game was what screamed out at me from Saturday because Southampton were a level above us. Now, we will never, as a club, be able to compete with the money that other clubs will have. And I, I don't, I'm quite happy with the Berylson family 
underpinning Millwall because I think they do have some sense of um, wanting us to, to to be who we are, albeit within a modern age because um, Cold Blow Lane's gone, listeners, and it won't come back. And we are now in 2023 and the game is changing. So I'm quite happy that we develop and improve our own players but we do need to find that next level and we need to clear out the stale thinking. But Harry, sorry, mate, you, you had your, your hand up. Last no, I, I, my, my problem with him, uh, as a, a, the, the idea is brilliant. And again, uh, I agree with both of his and, and, and Michael's points and yours, Nick, that it, it has gone stale and whatever. But my, my concern in the time that I've been going is that, to, to have these young players and to keep these young players, I compare us to Palace down the road, right? Look at the way our Palace bring through players, and it is a every season they have two or three that don't just play once or twice. They play regularly, even in the Premier League, right? And they take the best from South London because they're the eyes, eyes club, right? Yeah, yeah. If you don't get nicked by a Chelsea system where they sign 3,000 kids a year and they can afford to take the risk, right? But you look at, you look at Brighton, and, and like what you're saying with the algorithms and so on. I, I listened to an interview with Mark Baird the other day, former Millwall defender. And the way Brighton do it, it starts, it doesn't start at under 21 level. It doesn't start at under 18 level. It starts at like 12, 13. They're getting these kids ready. And the problem is, is for us to, to do that, to get to a level like that, it's going to take years. And I've got no problem if that's what what we're going to do. But you have to fully commit to it. And the, my worry is that Millwall don't really fully commit to anything long term properly. We don't we don't we don't do well with that because we'll have look a knee jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at the club shop. Um, hey, patience is the word you're searching for, well, Harry. Well, look at look at you know look at the the players that come through at League One level did really well at like League One level, but they were never good enough to take that championship yeah. step up i'm talking agree, about O'Brien and so on and so forth yeah so to make this appointment work what we're all agreeing is is that we need to get better at recruiting younger players and have some form of acceptance that we are going to have to sell five or six of these younger players to make it work going forward and we're not very good at that as a fan base to be honest are we Hello, Nick. It's Bill Slack taking you up on your invitation to uh, give my uh, opinion. Um, incidentally, no one's remotely interested in on the on the management um, of the den. I've got quite a lot of reservations about Joe Edwards. Um, I, I think we've known for ages that that we are being left behind a little bit in terms of style of play and. Forward thinking managers always seem to go elsewhere, you know. Um, I think we've, our last couple of managers, I think we could say are, are quite industrial in terms of style of play. Gary Rowick, quite quite negative. Um, Neil Harris was definitely the same. Um, it was never the beautiful passing game. I think my issue with Joe Edwards is that he's been involved in youth football really from from the first moment of his coaching career. He started coaching under eights, I think, at Chelsea. He's working with youth players who, you know, fantastic, brilliant youth players who are being trained to and coached to, to play a, a certain way. And that certain way is what we saw from Hull City, is what we saw from Southampton on Saturday. You know, keep the ball at all costs, you know, that, that passing out of from the back regardless and whenever I, I I watch a game like that at the Den where the opposition are doing that it absolutely bores the living daylights out of me and I know it does for many many other Millwall supporters because I hear it around me um, not not least of all Saturday at the Den you know um, fuck watching that every week I think was the comment I heard on the way out um, we don't like that sort of football I think the minute that we start playing out from the back and concede a couple because we've made mistakes, um, we're not very open-minded, we're not very forgiving, um, the Millwall support. So if that's really the, the, the style of play that he's going to introduce and that's the style of play that we can expect, I don't know that I want to be watching that 
kind of football, I'll be absolutely honest. And he is going to be probably one of the biggest components in the country of that style of play because that's how they treat or that's how they, they train young footballers to play. Um, I think my other issue with with young Mr Edwards is... I had, a, I had a look early. I think there, there are over 40,000 40, football clubs in the UK, spread over about 600 leagues. 40,000 teams. Um, we are the 38th best team in terms of pyramid out of 40,000 teams. And we're, in point, we're appointing a bloke who has never managed a football club. Never managed a club. Um... He's worked almost exclusively in youth football um, and had the most disastrous stint um, at Everton um, as, as assistant manager. And I don't know that I want my club to be his first club. I don't really think that, that you should be starting with a championship club. You should be starting your career with a championship club. And I don't think I want him starting with my championship club. If you're going to go down the young coach route, um, forward thinking, all, all of that stuff, then then surely there's managers in, in League One and League Two who have got three or four years of actually managing men in football um, than a lad who's, who's never managed a club. That, those, those are my reservations on Edwards. I think out of the candidates that have been... Um, the names that have been banded about, I wasn't impressed with Bill's, um, Michael Bill's uh, track record, uh, looked very new to management, absolute disaster at Rangers, um, Eustace I, th I think might have been able to do a job for us, but I think if you take the loon factor out of it, um, and I think we're entitled to do that at, at, at Millwall. Um, I don't think we're a football club that can condemn someone for being a loon. Let's put it that way. Um, Nathan Jones, I, I think, was for me, was the best candidate out of the lot of them. You know, and, and forget about Stoke. Nobody seems to make a success of Stoke. Um, Southampton, they they wanted him out full stop, and he didn't do himself any favours with what he said, but. As Millwall supporters, as a club, you have to look at what he did at Luton. All right, he didn't take them up, but he built that team from the ground up. Similar size club to us, um, lower budget than us. They're playing in the Premier League, and it, you know he, he, he's got the experience of the divisions. It's, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. I, I'm not entirely sure why. Out of all of the candidates, he didn't get it, but maybe he is more of a loon than than we knew. I, d I don't know, but I, I genuinely hope. I mean, if if Edwards gets the gets the job, then I, I genuinely, genuinely hope he, he proves me wrong. Um, and you can all point back to this podcast and go, "Ah, oh, yeah, but you didn't want him there in the first place." And what do you know? And all that stuff. Um, but I'm just not sure. I, I, a bloke, his first job, our club, not for me, not for me. Definitely a risk, and, and let's hope it pays off. I'll speak to you soon. Ta da, mate. Achtung, Mailball. Patience, of Lil. I mean, you know, patience is going to be key here because we have to give Rob Edwards the time an opportunity to find, find his way through this. Um, and, you know, patience in developing players because we, we have some players, I think, that can improve a lot and some that need to find an improved mental attitude. I probably think of Zian Fleming, and, 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 and a skillful player, but something's gone wrong in his mindset, I, I believe, at the moment. One or two others around the side as well. So that's going to take a while for that to develop. We... You know, we've given other other managers, even even the likes of Holloway, was actually given a fair amount of time to at least try to implement whatever plan it was that he was trying to implement. We have to be the same with Rob Edwards. We can't expect um, instantaneous changes because we're going to have this squad as it is for a little while at least until he can start to impose his, his personality on it. I mean, patience, do you think we're going to find the patience around the den for that? 
I think that we'll find the patience for Joe Edwards. Yeah, well, not for Rob Edwards. Rob Edwards. I've got this... Do you know, all morning, listeners, I've had Rob Edwards in my fucking mind. I will... I will re- I won't read it. I'll leave my mistake in so you can tell that I'm human. Joe Edwards. I think, you, I think we are getting more patient. Look how long it took for people to turn on Rowett. Yeah. It was yeah. only... You really, really got away with it until, what, August this season, didn't he? August, September this season from the majority of fans. I know that H was ahead of the game as per normal and wanted rid of him about 18 months ago. <laughs> yeah, but then again, H wants rid of Joe Edwards even before he arrived. <laughs> so he's actually outdoing himself completely on this one. He's, he's, hedging, he's hedging your bets. He's definitely yeah, no, but no, but yeah, no well, I'll take your point. We are getting more patient and I think he will be given time. As long as the football is entertaining, and there's no reason to think why the the football won't be entertaining. He's got a major job. He's got one hell of a job because he has to sort that defence out in January. That has to be number well, one priority. Pace, pace and quality on the ball needs to yeah. be found somewhere. I mean, whether... The yeah, likes I think of- staying up this season should be achievable. And I think as long as we're between mid-table and the top 10, we'll be doing all right. I think everybody would probably agree on that. I don't think we think we're going to go up. No, 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 no. no. Our defensive displays are killing us. Yeah, I agree, agree, agree. And uh, if he can sort that out, I think that he'll get the time that, that he deserves. I mean, Michael, Adam Barrett, I'm just looking at the, um, the South London press here. Richard Corley again, second report. Adam Barrett's going to stay as part of the backroom setup with Joe Edwards. Not Rob Edwards, who's Luton manager. I've just looked up who Rob Edwards is, and um, it's Luton's manager. Or Jonathan Edwards, the triple jumper. That's where I've got, that's where I've got it stuck in my head, listeners. Apologies to, to Joe. Um, he's also going to have Andy Myers, who is Chelsea's lone player technical coach. I don't know what... What that kind of role is? Is that is that a, a, a technical coach for their players out on loan? I'm going to guess. I mean, yeah, he looked at the players that are out on loan, and I think he, I think he, coaches monitors them, with, monitors their their progress. Yeah, to okay. actually improve their game, things that they can improve. So when they come back into their system, the their better players. I think that's probably all as it is. It's just another word, solid role, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Adam Barrett, Michael, apparently was on the same UEFA Pro Licence coaching course as Myers, Andy Myers, and Joe Edwards, and they want him to remain on the team, which is interesting. Um, you know, like, promotion's guaranteed then, isn't it? <laughs> who did you go to school with? Anyone famous in your yeah. class? Because that makes you them as well, then. Yeah, place, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I, do you know what? I'm, I'm, su- I'm surprised that Adam Barrett's staying. I thought, um, especially because I, I believe he interviewed for the role as well, didn't he? He did. Okay. So um, I find it, I find Please. it slightly odd, where especially more in football, when someone applies for a role doesn't get it but can still stay around, because then the, you you might have someone in the background going, "Well, I would have done better if I got it." Um, but um, think it might not just be a continuity thing that they might possibly, just keep possibly. him on Link to the squad. From, must be, must yeah. be. And, and they don't want to pay him off. Uh, yeah, well, however long he's got. That's left. very real. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it's true though, isn't it? Yeah, we've only got a very, very small coaching staff and probably a very, very small coaching budget. As far as I know, it's only what? Yeah, but it was only Rowett, Barrett, the two Paul Robinsons. Yeah, yeah. Possibly on our coaching staff. I can't think of anybody else. Um, there's one more, isn't there? Yeah, unless somebody there's, wants to. There's come. another. There's another defender. There's four. The, the four Stooges weren't there. There was mm. Rowett, Barrett. Paul Robinson, the Northern one, not our one, and yeah. somebody else who sits on the bench and seemingly does fuck all. But from 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 um, what from what I gather with with Adam Barrett, he's he does seem popular with the players. He's uh, a fantastic coach by all what I've heard. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, a very nice bloke. I, he, I, he, could, I, I, he could be the next SLO. Um, when, it's being when, a nice <laughs> bloke. When people decide to leave, the link between yeah, the nice club and with the qualification would be a very different footballing hierarchy, wouldn't it? But he, I mean, I've met him. This sounds very dark. 
<laughs> yeah, could be the next lurch. Could he actually? Do yeah. Lurch is mm. actually lurch is actually the chef at the players. Uh, at the lurch was um, they posted me when I was selling the poppies with a um, nice guy called Kay there who was on the MSC round at the Southampton turn. I've never been round the other the away end turnstiles ever in all my thirty fifty odd years or thirty years of the new stadium. And uh, Lurch was patrolling the area like um, like, like, like the, the Royal Navy would patrol Scarpa Flow when the German fleet was <laughs> tied up there at the end of the First World War. It was, it was like, you know, just sailing around, looking at everything and everyone. Um, there was there was word that apparently Sparta Prague had teamed up with Southampton were going to come in and mob-handed. But I, I, most of the people I saw lacked the front tooth and looked like they had just come out of the local... Um, <laughs> Coffee shop centre for uh, you know elderly people daytime. Did anyone see the uh, Southampton online content of pretending they'd taken over Millwall by drinking in a pub in Waterloo? We've, we've gone off. Like we've gone off topic, but no, yeah, I, I, I did no, 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 you have, you have it. Yeah, and I saw it, and I was like, "That's like me turning up at Portsmouth and cl- claiming a result." Claiming a win. We're claiming yeah, a win. We're at a pub in Bex Hill, and we've done Brighton over you know? <laughs> on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Yeah, it was very strange, and and someone they, they didn't like the "Let him die, let him die" chant um, oh, when yeah, one of their cool. players went down. I don't know where they've been for the last forty years. I mean, that, that chant was going in the seventies. That the old. The, the to be old fair, day. I didn't like the fact that we kicked the ball out. We should have kept on playing. We, we well, that, yeah. the other fuck. Well, maybe Joe that. Edwards will stop that culture. You never know. Back, 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 back that's to new, topic. That's yeah. new school. I, I wanted someone to be. T- I wanted someone to be. You know. Kneecapping people, really. I, I, did, was, I, I did, was thinking I of Muscat. Like, that was what I was thinking. We're going way off target here, listeners. But anyway, um, I did like on Saturday the fact that when we made a couple of tackles, we hurt them and they stayed down. I, I like that. That's a bit more like Millwall. Um, whether that fits in with 2023, 24 no, football, it doesn't. <laughs> it's another no, matter. That very much does it, especially all. That's, that's going to be Joe Edwards' problem. I'm just looking at a fantastic, um, I don't know who this person is, HC Football Scout, apparently, but he's done like a a, a Twitter X um, pen portrait of, of Joe Edwards. Uh, who is he? I don't know if anyone's seen this. It was on Twitter. Um, what should Millwall fans What's expect? Church, uh, HC Football 01. At, at HC Football 01. So I'll go through each one. Um, what, 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 who is Joe Edwards? What should Millwall fans expect? So he's done some research, listeners. That's apparently. decent. Football scout, with no, football scout with no listed qualifications. I think it may be one of the football scouts. I mean, this is this is this is a step in the right direction, Neil. I mean, Joe Edwards is a young manager; is currently the caretaking manager of the England under twenties. I mean, that's a level of management. You know, I know he's not experienced in in a championship sense, but I can't think of any Millwall manager of the past that's come at us with quite that level of of uh, management. Maybe McGee was he involved with the Scottish national team? Um, but you know, it's, it's it's something to have a an international level experienced manager coming into us. I think it's quite interesting, as you've said. Yeah. He, let's just get behind it. So what if people haven't heard of him? There is now an increasing clamour for young managers. You see the job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see the job that O'Neill did at Bournemouth last year. And he's done pretty well at Wolves this season. Yeah. Art- yeah. Huh? to a certain extent, learn under the great cock at Manchester City who's ruined English football with his ways. Uh, (laughs) Guardiola. Yeah. (laughs) And he's gone into Arsenal without a great deal of management experience. You've got... Yeah, you've got McKenna at uh, Ipswich. Ipswich. You've got Schumacher at Plymouth. Yeah, got uh, the guy it's coming from that genre of, of manager, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. it? yeah, the problem is that there are, yeah, we said it at the start, there are too many stale managers, there are too many managers that just go on and off the managerial merry go round. Gary Rabbit could now be the next member of that. Yeah, it's fucking hope so. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Harry, he's assisted. He's I mean, England under twenty caretaker manager. There it is. So he's going to know the likes of Roman Sa, um, other players that may benefit us. We hope um, if he can if he exploit his links. He's worked assistant to Frank Lampard at Chelsea and Everton. Worked as an assistant with Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea. Um, he's managed the, the Chelsea under twenty three side for two years. I know that's not Championship football. I'm, I'm going to, you know, 
say that outright. He's 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 won the FA Youth Cup with the Chelsea under twenties. Yep. Um, under 18s, he's managed one. Of the, mm-hmm. It took the semi finals of the uh, EFL trophy and done well in the UEFA youth uh, categories. So he has the right ingredients. Um, whether that makes a good manager is going to be the question. Um, yeah. Harry, then we'll come to Michael after. Yeah, if, if yeah, was, the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? Um, yeah. And it's a results driven business. My, my worry is. is it's a lot to learn in a team that's kind of a little bit rudderless. I think we were rudderless before we lost Railway, let alone, I think, all season we've looked like. We look a bit shell shock. I feel like we've still not really got over Blackburn at home last season, if I'm being totally honest. And then to lose JB on top of that, I, I generally think the club's a bit fucking up. Like, yeah, no, I think that's like, a good point. Very good point. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I'd go along with that as well. Yeah, and I, I think that this is like. I feel like this is mini JB or junior JB grabbing hold of what he wants to do and stamping his authority on it, finally, whatever that is. And if this is what we want to do, I think we owe, as a fan base, the Berylsons time, so their man to to have time to to do what he wants to do. Does that mean we might get perilously close to the relegation zone at points this season? I think that might be be a possibility because I have no problem, and I'm saying this, I will have no problem if we play kids that are Millwall kids that are owned by Millwall to 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 learn their trade. So to I speak. have no problem with yeah. that. What I have a problem with is taking loans from players that we're never going to be able to get. That's what I have a problem with because long term that doesn't help you. It might be all right for this season, but the loans that we've currently got aren't very good. So I have a problem with them playing ahead of our SA Amaku. So I I I kind of get it. I I just want to see us if if we are going to do this maybe in the short to medium term, hopefully his recruitment of knowing these players and this person's never going to get a look in at Chelsea, so we're going to have a cheeky bid or, or something like that is fine. But in the short term, I'd rather see the talent play. I think our under-21s are being mismanaged because I don't think I need to I see agree. Longman agree. and Honeyman ever again, if I'm being totally honest. Um, and there's got to be players within that under-21 setup that are... If they're not good enough to play for Millwall, then we need to play them so they've got championship experience so we can sell them, not so they just walk off with no contracts. Hello. Hi, Nick. <coughs> Sorry, it's uh, Matt Richards here. Um, just thought I'd dial in with my thoughts about the uh, imminent appointment of Joe Edwards. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I mean. I'm generally generally a positive person so I will be positive about it I mean there's there's some really good positives he's got no managerial baggage which is what you know virtually every, all the other candidates had um you know we haven't got a major rivalry with Chelsea have we so we're not really worried about the Chelsea connections he's young so he has late you know he's got the latest coaching ideas obviously well connected um highly thought of as well in an under 20 coach so that's really good um, and so the connections as well, you think that would be help to kind of bring in new players, um, new talent in, you know, windows, January and in the summer as well. Um, so that's that's really good. Um, I suppose the, the obvious um, negatives, if you like, are, you know, no managerial experience whatsoever. Um, and, and you know, there's been some good examples of people done well recently, like the book at um, Ipswich and Steve Cooper at Forest. But, you know, they've been given funds to do that. Or or Cooper, anyway, inherited a good squad, I guess, from Hewton. Um, so there's, a, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a difference there. Um, it's going to be head coach, which is interesting. But, you know, I don't, I don't, I think that's just the title, really. I know because it'll be director of football, he's still going to, he's still going to have other responsibilities. So being a first team coach is very different to being head coach. So he's got to take that on as a, you know, young man, 37. Um that's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. I think some of the some of the biggest questions are around about the type of football we want. You know, say when I say we, I'm talking about everybody as fans. You know, everyone says we don't want hoofball. Nobody wants that because it. But at the same time, we've all been at the ground where, you know, the crowd gets agitated because we, we, the build up is slow around the back, and we spot 
where we think there could be a forward pass, it doesn't go in, we get frustrated and then, then the ball gets hoofed up. So I think there's there's a bit of a... Um, we need to understand that as, as fans. I think a lot do, but, you know, not all, everyone. Um, so it's about the type of football. What is he going to play? You know, and um, it will have to be possession-based to a certain extent, but it needs to be attacking. Um and that's easier said than done because of the quality of players we've got. We've got some better quality players, Denore, you know, Fleming, SA, but not everyone's got that. So it's it's being able to mould that squad. Can you coach it into the players that haven't got it at the moment? Don't know. I think that's easier said than done. So it's who can he bring in? Um you know, it's uh it's it would be a combination of support from Berylson in the windows and um what he can bring in with his contacts and then how we can kind of get us get us playing, and also having the support of the the fans. There's so many factors into it, isn't there? Um, but I'm I'm positive, and I, I was having to think really about um, like I said, you know, a negative is obviously no managerial experience. But I'm thinking about I've quite a few managers, head coaches, if you like, that haven't had managerial experience. And you think back, obviously, like Harris. Um, David Tuttle, um, I'll gloss over that one, but you know, Wise, Mick McCarthy, George Graham was his first managerial appointment. Um, and I probably won't mention Peter Anderson, but sorry, I have already. But anyway, you know, you think about some of those. You know, George Graham, brilliant. I think for me, one of the best managers we've ever had. Mick McCarthy did well. You know, I know he, he left in the cloud, but he did well for us for a few seasons. Dennis Wise, obviously, you know, massive cup success and. You know, with a bit more luck, we would have done better in the uh, getting up to the top level. Um, and obviously Harris. So you know, it's much as I say negative is he's never had any manager experience. Actually, that's not necessarily a negative when you look back of Millwall's kind of recent history, the last forty years. So yeah, I'm going to be positive. All those, you know, those kind of caveats there around being supported by management, being supported by the fans. Um, it's. I won't say I'm excited because <laughs> I think we've, you know, been here before. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm feeling positive, and uh, just want to kind of get him in there and get us going. That, I think that's what we all want. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's it for me. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Cheers, Nick. Come on, you lines. Achtung, Mailball. Michael was an intro, just going um, along this this um, thread here. I mean, the, the, the chap's trying to analyse what style of play we might expect out of Joe Edwards, and he's gone back to um, I've got to take it. He's gone on the YouTube to find this game's an under twenty three game for Chelsea v Plymouth in twenty eighteen, five nil win for Chelsea. But uh, there we set up three five two, both wide centre backs. I don't think we'll uh, this is a recipe for disaster with Murray Wallace and, and <laughs> Wide in possession, so a lot of possession for Murray and for Jake, um, and the two central midfielders dropping in, supporting um, depending on which side the the field the ball was on. Um, out of possession, um, he played very compact, very hard to play through, and the opposition resulted to long balls. But it was only playing Plymouth, so you know, and that we, we'll, we don't know. So we were absolutely toilet at the time. I think. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I actually think that that was a season that they got relegated to Division 4. Right. So, anyway, they got stuff 5 0 by the Chelsea under 23 side there. Um, we yeah. don't know. We don't really know. I mean, that was one game. And as 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 we said, all those caveats in there. But um, I think Harry's made a very good point. It's going to be the youngsters where the future lies. And that's where the improvements are going to be most obvious. Because I just can't see the likes of our current back line. Uh, probably even including Wes Harding, I think will give you 100%. But I don't know that I want to see him in possession for long periods of time and passing the ball around. There's still, but, a, there's still, a, there's still a place for Jake Cooper and, and Wes Harding in the transition. It's just... Well, they've got to be. No, no, no one else. It was, fan, it, was, it was fan last season. It's just you need a ball playing centre-back for him. And the last two seasons, we signed one. And for some unknown reason this season, we went, nah, it'd be all right. And it was never going to be. And I, I, I really struggled to understand why a ball-playing centre-back wasn't number one on the target list all summer. Michael, you had your hand up earlier, mate, before I went on my little 
No, Steve. no, I, I was just going to say as well, like we're obviously talking about like the level where that Joe Edwards has been before and all that kind of stuff and his setups and everything. And it, it just occurred to me, like let, let's not for, um, forget a nil, like your your statistical and historical knowledge is better than mine and everyone else is here. So I'm hoping you back up what I say rather than say how useless I am. But, um, you know, let's not think so long ago. It was like, you know, when, when you had these Premier League academies and under-21s and under-23s and reserves and all this kind of thing, they sort of revamped the system, didn't they? Because the Premier League teams and the bigger teams didn't feel that the rest of the competition out there um, was good enough. And there was the argument with the loan play, like players weren't being loaned out anymore because they felt that like the sort of FA Reserve League or the FA Premier Reserve League weren't as good as some of the clubs they were being loaned to. And these are the type of players and, and the standards and the systems that Joe Edwards has been working with. So I was just going to make the point that, he, yes, he may not have that many... Um, sort of um, CV wise, big jobs on his on his name or anything like that. But you saying there about our academy and our system, you don't know whether he's going to come in and just completely revitalise that. He's probably going to come in and go right. So you was back in. You're still in your dark age of how your reserves and under twenty ones play. See, because we because I've come from a system that's more evolved, that might help out as well. But I just I I think with the ball playing centre half, I think at this level, Harry. They're, they're few and far between and you won't be able to afford them this level. That's why we've always loaned them and not had them very long. Uh, but I agree that it's something we need. Cooper and Murray Wallace, can they play in the back three? Or well, depends how good their, their wing-backs are, really, because a lot of the time your wing-backs get you out of trouble. But I've, I've just like you saying there, there though, Nick, um, I'm, I'd be much more excited playing a 3-5-2 at the den than I would be playing a 5-3-2, that's for sure. I'd be excited only for the profit I'd make out of the fucking goals we conceded that playing a three five two. Someone made a really good point talking about the Edwards appointment and the the potential that the um you know the uh, the Myers and and what they're going to bring with them will probably line more as much with the youngsters and therefore the um when the the new training center comes into into being at, at Brands Hatch um, because that's also I don't know when that's due to. To open up, but you get a feeling this is a, a signing um, with a, half an eye on what can be developed out of that new academy. I thought that's going to be that is status, but that's the kind of aim for it, I would think. So it's an interesting appointment. Um, massive gamble, as we've said at the start of today's conversation, boys. Um, I think we have to give him a chance. I really hope he gets that chance because it's a really interesting, a really interesting move by by the club and. As odd as it might sound to a lot of listeners, and, and Neil and I have, have done many um, shows about the history of our club, one thing we've never really lacked for, Neil, at certain moments in our history, is ambition. We've always we've always tried to aim upwards, in often in very dire circumstances. I'm thinking of some of the stadium developments over time, you know, the, the Super Den, for example, back in the seven, even the move, really, to the Den, the, 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 the Zampa Road site now. We, we've never wanted for ambition when push has come to shove. It's it's never really worked for us at times, but this is another move in that direction. I don't know if that's overcooking it for you, but that's how I'm trying to see it. I think you're right. Everything that's happening, I think, at the club is we're trying to move in the right direction. We're trying to move away from the small wall mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah all training facilities so we're going to build a a, tran, a, a, a training centre near Brands Hatch or wherever it is mm. yeah, I just wish they'd announce when it's going when work's going to bloody start <laughs> um, and our scouting has, appears to have stepped up a level yeah yeah uh, uh, Olgo gets a lot of stick and a lot of wrong stick. I think that people remember him as a... It's because he used to go in the house of fun and they could have a, take yeah, a piss out of him. And so yeah, well, people remember him as a 14, 15-year-old schoolboy at Dulwich College who wanted, yeah. uh, who wanted a break into journalism. Yeah. I think we need to move on from that. He's a very, very intelligent and very highly qualified young man. Yeah. He's also well-respected within the game now. Yeah, no, he is. And you can see that he took himself off to Stoke. Yeah. And he worked outside of the uh, even the Millwall system. Okay, he didn't have any experience when he arrived. And I think that Amber just tossed in Michael Calvin's book and said, there you go, that's how you should go and play. 
<laughs> yeah, with the story. Yeah, with 80, 40 p a mile. Yeah, with the story that I was told is correct. Yeah, and I've got no reason to disbelieve it from the source of the story. But <laughs> it, 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 but we just have to. There's just something that this club, and I'm going to criticise Harry here. Yeah, when we came onto this call, and he kind of laid into uh, that was tight. Yeah, but the appointment <laughs> of Joe Edwards. There's something at this club where. We have to be glass half empty and not glass half full. Let's give Aldo a chance, yeah? Everything at this club, or most things at this club, the off-the-field experience on the match day, completely changed out of all recognition. You can now have a drink around the ground and something to eat, etc., etc., etc. Okay, they haven't got the bloody... Retail side of the operation is still stuck in 18, 1885, isn't it? But <laughs> yeah, we're starting to recruit from abroad players that have got value. Um, another, also another full, another full house on Saturday. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I, yeah, there were some empty, house, there were some empty yeah. seats knocking around the ground, but those were sold seats. Um, whether the it people show up. Or fifth this season or fourth this season? I'm losing count. You know, 18,900. I mean, that for how long in our collective meal lives has been, you know, obviously there's always the Arsenal attendance, which was. And we're fucking uh, 20 awful at the minute. But we, we are fucking awful. We are fucking we are awful. That's awful. the truest thing that you've seen. Number of, the oh, number of full so... houses we've blown. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. But my, my point being. That, that that's a full house is something something unusual you know we went for about well most of the bulk of the new stadium being built before we achieved that level of, of, of crowd now yeah i mean walking out the den saturday boys i mean i was surrounded by people speaking in dutch and uh spanish and italian so you know so what? But, we're in london we're in london arms are being put on seats exactly. and yeah but that empty seat is not going to earn you 35 quid Plus oh. everything that they spend, and, that, and that's and you know what, and, and that's 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 spot on. And, and and the thing is, is that we, I always, I always say that, you know, you've got to go. You, you're right, Neil. You, you've got to go with change because ultimately, as Millwall fans, we love sentiment as next as much as the person sat next to us. But if you're going to keep going back to your nine, ten thousands every week just to be around people you know, enjoy enjoy mid table League One lads because you ain't going to get any better than that. And I'll tell you what, it is dire down there, absolutely dire. It's quite funny in block one, which is often a, a block where, because it's it's not populated much with Millwall fans. There are some going in there, obviously, myself included, and the pigeons that sit above above my seat. You need to but, name um, them pigeons. They've had they've had long enough not being named. Bolina and Zambra, I'm going to call. Um, but there was so you get a lot of the foreign fans. There was a family in front of me. I don't know where they came from. I, I had a sense that they were from Eastern Europe, but there was a husband wife. Two girls. The girls were both kind of laying on the dad, looking at their phones. They weren't really into the football. It was like a family. To be honest, to be honest that weren't far away from most of us <laughs> fucking watching that, was it? But there was just this wonderful contrast because obviously you've still got quite a few old school block ones there. So you've got this, the, the foreigners kind of laying out or expecting, I don't know what, whilst blokes are shouting, you can't wanking wanker signs at the Southampton. <laughs> Offer, offering at Southampton. Smoking, outside. smoking something exotic. They weren't, they weren't <laughs> aiming at other people laying down, were they? <laughs> no, they were just looking on. In, I mean, it, it, there is just this wonderful contrast of bewilderment and, and they must know what they've come to see at Millwall, but maybe that's part of the entertainment. But I, I, can't see that, I can't be, I can't see that being part of the advertising campaign. What some, you know, like, some <laughs> bloke from the Erif shouting, you can Some bloke from the Kirby estate <laughs> offering people out outside. So that's wonderful. Um, they, were, they were certainly decked out in Millwall gear, so that's that's the other side of it. I mean, you know, the point being um, sell-out crowds, whether there's, it's actually fully occupied or not, is, is another thing, but we're selling the tickets. Neil, I've just uh, I've just Googled the, the why we haven't started building the training ground. It's because it's going through planning permission and the local right. residents are worried about the light pollution. I thought it had already been passed. I, 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 think it, I think it did, and then I think there was like, a, they have a last chance of appeal, so I think it's got a clerk. Ah, right. Go okay. that last did one. I read, I know we've got two rugby union heads sitting on this screen at the moment and it's not my sport not uh, my but i said did i read that wasp wasps are moving out to a seven, oaks. Location? seven oaks 
Is oh. that to is that going to be to a developed location? I mean, there's no stadium that I know of in 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 Seven Oaks, or is that a training ground? Are there? Yeah, Wasps haven't even got a team yet, so right. So it's, it's a, set, a start dream. from scratch kind of thing. Yeah, it's a pipe dream basically. I'm, um, I've not really looked into it. If yeah, but if I cared enough, I'd up. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. I just, just the story struck me because yeah, we're I'd out there. Up Lawrence Lally over somebody and ask him if I was really that bothered. Yeah, but <laughs> it's a pipe dream. They haven't got a side. They haven't got a league to play in. Well, they I have think... technically the tenth division, didn't they, or something like that? If they want uh, potentially. But mm. that's so far away from the Premiership. It is, yeah. It's a bit like us in the Premier League, even though we're only <laughs> here by twenty places away. It's one of those. You mentioned you mentioned the uh, you mentioned the swear word there. We're not allowed to mention that word. Well, I thought yeah. we weren't allowed to mention the Premier League. The Premier League. Oh, no. Rather than oh no, we're not allowed to mention that either. But yeah. Kent, 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 Wall and Millwall wasps. You heard it here first. Gentlemen, I think if we're talking about Wasps, we've probably reached the end of our conversation about Joe Edwards. Rob Edwards is the Luton manager. I, 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 I He's got on Luton that. on the brain, mate. Oh, mate. I, 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 Potentially, Millwall sharing... Yeah, I know we've spoken about this, Nick. Sharing some kind of complex, sporting complex, with yeah. a premiership rugby team. Well, yeah. An idea. As long as we don't get involved, because... That is a well, serious a, black hole. That's a that's a, that's a cash no. that's a cash bleed, isn't it? You know, we, no, it's I mean, absolute, uh, but and as long as they don't expect that we're going to build it, <laughs> to be quite <laughs> honest, or the yeah, well, that JB's gonna put his hand in his, his, his American pocket. I mean, it was just a story I saw the other day, and I yeah, suppose it does the, have some kind of merits. I think. I think. Yeah, I think that Michael probably agree with me. Harry, Harry would like us to get a Brands Hatch linkage so we get some motorsport in there. No, but no, it... I'm not bothered about that. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just worried about our. I'm just worried about our. What's the right thing? It's, it's great saying that then, but there will come a time where those it won't be the trendy place to come and watch football anymore. So you do have to build in these in these good times because bad times do come. Even though the football on the pitch at the moment is particularly bad commercially. That's good, and I feel like you've got a you've got a strike while the iron's hot. So playing aggressive rock and roll football to quote fucking Klopp and all that bollocks of modern football is a uh, is important for the kids. Stand with the kids on TikTok, all that bollocks. I the agree with that you slightly, H. In that I think Millwall will always be attractive for the casual fan because we're in London, London it makes it it's a very it. central London location, so they can get in and out, they can see the sights in the morning, they can come down and see the sights in the afternoon. The sights in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice if we can sell them a I've, shirt, I've, though, I've, wouldn't I've, it? I've, do you know what? Before, yeah, before before we go, I've always said that, Neil. Always said that. If you, if you like, I always, I always remember when we, we used to play the likes of Yeovil, you'd, you look at Yeovil's away attendances and they were shocking when they're, when they're in Millwall. Because they want to have a weekend away, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Sure. And yeah, we've got your foreign tourists that are ripe to be pilfered. <laughs> you go in that club shop, you've got the right to be pilfered. Trust me. Yeah, well, the... across the threshold, you will be pilfered. Um, we've uh, as conversation listeners gone far and wide as of ever. When, when I bring this, the Mill Brains Trust together, you get a far and wide conversation. I'm going to wind it up there, boys. I think you probably explored the unknown quantity that is Joe Edwards. Um, exciting times that we hope ahead. We have um, to this weekend. Yeah, we haven't said, actually. Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday away. Well, we need a result, don't we? It's a, it's a bit of a must win. Absolute dog shit. Mm. Sheffield Wednesday at the moment, aren't they? A basket case for club with an owner appealing for the real owners to put £2 million in so he can pay a tax bill. Uh, they haven't They'll won. beat us two nil. One, one nil twins. The has gone yeah. written all over him. <laughs> yeah, but the best player got sent off at the weekend. Barry Bannon, who normally has a good. He normally tears and, as a new one, doesn't he? Yeah. And everything. It, it it's a great away day, isn't it, Hillsborough? It was always yeah. one of my favourite away days because it was always nice, big like, ground, nice old, ground actually. Yeah. Old ground. Nice pubs around the town, nice yeah. food to be had, and it was always a good away game. Uh, this weekend, yeah, but I don't care that he hasn't been 
appointed yet. He has to win this weekend. He has to hit the ground running. Gentlemen, I've got I've got two questions that I posed at the start of today's show. Punditgames.co.uk listeners, get yourself a pundit quiz game for Christmas. Um, if well, that, that's that, that, that's that two questions. These are teasers, so you get a sense of the kind of question. You have to answer five questions in a row. You score a goal, and you play for whatever period of time, forty-five minutes each way, if you want, I suppose. Um, anyway, so teaser questions give you a little bit of a sense of what's involved. Swedish football royalty, forty-eight goals in the Champions League. He hangs with the likes of Ronaldo, Messi, Diego Costa, Lewandowski. Is the one and only Zlatan. Zlatan, yeah, Ibrahimovic, less one and only. Well, probably a better name. Probably a bigger name, actually. Nottingham Forest legend chaps. Signed for Derby. Um, shocked them. Signed for Derby in 2008. Went on to Celtic where he scored 64 goals, 147 goals. Um, that was in 2011 to 17. Derby and Cho- uh, Derby and Forest before that. Anyway, any ideas? Scottish? Common. Is it Commons? Chris Commons. Nathan Tyson, if you would have said a Millwall player. Yeah, when you said a Nottingham Forest legend, uh, it threw me because no, you wouldn't describe Chris Commons as a Nottingham Forest legend. I'm using the wording of the Danish compiler of the questions. There are people in Denmark yeah. who spend their lives trawling the football league. Most obscure, obscure questions. Yeah, but I think he's one of the ones who comes mm-hmm. to the Denmark. Yeah, well, I, I think it's it Chris Commons, but I wouldn't ever call him a Nottingham Forest a legend. I was thinking there couldn't be many Nottingham Forest legends after Brian Clough, could there? No. Neil Harris? Oh, it's, 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 it's a modern... <laughs> they love him up there. <laughs> a modern, modern football misuse of the word le- legends. Anyway, punditgames.co.uk. It says every time you buy a quiz game, the Lions Food Hub benefits, and that's really what it's all about. Chaps, thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Hi Nick, um, Matt Webb here. Yeah, as I said, I um, thought I'd put uh, another voice note in about the imminent appointment of Joe Edwards as the uh, Millwall manager. I don't know about you, mate, but I'm really excited about this appointment. I think I'm in the big camp of having somebody from a strong coaching background and development to lead the team. Follow the same pathway as what Leicester have done with the Man City coach, Ipswich with Kieran McKenna and people like Gary O'Neill and Rob Edwards to name a couple more. I think this is showing tremendous ambition that the club wants to go down and the way it should go down. Bypassing the old school manager now with a load of yes men behind and I do believe that's what we had at Millwall under Rowett. So I'm hoping that's the uh, sayonara to the uh, Birmingham Mafia, I like to call them. And new fresh ideas. Now, the man spent nearly 30 years at Chelsea developing quality, quality players. And if he's been at Chelsea Academy for that long, he would have had the likes of Georgie Savile with him. So maybe it's... um, written in the stars that George Savile comes back and I think I put it in my voice voice note that he should be made captain and I think this this it's these coaches that are going to get the best out of the likes of Savile but also it gives the opportunities for the likes of SA and Maku um, and some of the other fringe or the under 23s to actually really develop themselves and I've got a funny feeling this fella is not going to shy away from that it also Gives the, gives the opportunity for the likes of Fleming to play the way that Zian Fleming might want to play. So, in my eyes, I can't see nothing but positives from this appointment. Is it a risk? Oh, absolutely. But any manager being appointed is a risk, uh, if you think about it. And he wants to go into club management. He has to start somewhere. So, you know, it, for me, mate, it's, it's brilliant. I mean... I probably would have got shot down, but I would also have had likes of Bill as well. But I know that name is sort of like poisoned a little bit, I think, round round the manor. So, but you know that sort of type of coach would have been is the ideal person to take Mill forward. Is he gonna like reinvent the wheel? No, he'll just bring a new, different 
coaching method, coaching style and management style to the club and to the team. And it won't happen overnight. He's gonna. He's got a bit of a turbulent uh, month ahead. I mean, just now sitting in the uh, sitting in the barbers with my boy. Um, I mean, I, I don't need it. I looked at the calendar for December and thought, bloody hell, it's going to be a bit of a rough ride. Until we can get his players in and the style of which he wants me all to play, it's going to be a little bit of a rough ride. So we just need a little bit of patience to um, allow him to change it. So, yeah, I mean, Mill's defeat yesterday and my boy's Sunday league defeat today. Has to be one nil up at half time. This is sort of like a bit of a shining light on a, what has been a real miserable 24 hours footballing wise. So, yeah, let's uh, look forward to it. Welcome to the Den, Joe Edwards. And I'll see you on Saturday. Come on, you Lions. Hi, Nick. Uh, Lawrence Binney here. Um, well, okay. Joe Edwards. Who the fuck? Is Joe Edwards um, very very unusual appointment for Mill Football Club? I was trying to sort of wrap my brains, trying to think of the last manager we had, uh, or my last manager we appointed who didn't have much of a track record, and uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, kind of thinking, oh, Steve Lomas. Um, without the West Ham connection, so maybe he he stands a better a better chance. Um, actually, thinking about that, around the time that we appointed Lomas, we were linked to Sammy Herpia at the time, the former former Liverpool skipper, um, who was up and coming in the management world. Bit of a bullet dodge there because he did fuck all um, uh, going going ahead um, in management. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a very unusual appointment for Millwall. I was really expecting us to go for like one of the usual names, a, a Warnock or a, you know, even a Eustace actually, even a Eustace, you know, someone with immediate championship experience. Don't really know anything about Joe, Joe Edwards. Don't know what sort of football he likes to play. Don't know what his ideas are, um, uh, kind of tactically, style of play, anything like that. And I noticed that he's been made head coach instead of manager, which suggests that there could be a director of football incoming, um, which is a very modern way of doing things. Again, very un Millwall. Um, but good luck to him. He's gonna he's gonna need it. Um, if I had to hang uh, hang my hat on a position at the moment, I'd say he's probably gone in three months. Um, with uh, kind of screams of hoof it up to the big bloke from the south lower. Um, but I really do hope he's successful because, I mean, God knows we've we've needed a progressive revolution at the club for some years now. So good luck, Joe. Welcome to the den. Um, yeah, thanks, Nick. Nick, yes, I think uh, Joe Edwards is an exciting gamble. Uh, I'm talking to like mates at Watford away and other other supporters, and I tell you what, there was no one that stuck with anyone. And I mean, you know what we're like. We're we're an hard bunch to please. You you know, you could watch a game and see that someone in your eyes has had an amazing game, and you'll speak to someone else, and they'll go, "He oh, was shit today." And you think, "What the fuck were you watching?" You know, uh, and it's always been like that. So I would speak to someone, and you would, you could name anyone off that list, and it would be, "No, no, fuck, don't want him, don't want him." And you're like, there was no one that stood out. This fella, Joe Edwards, was the only positive out of the bunch that people are like yeah do you know what what mind him I've only seen like one or two moody comments on social media but everyone was four I think the England link helped it link helped and uh, you know he's he's done a bit you know already and he's I mean for the first time in since I've been going he's a manager we're going to have who's um, that actually I'm older than which is quite depressing in some respects but um, I wonder how the players respond to someone who's some of them around their age, you know what I mean? But if he knows what he's doing, uh, I think they'll respond well. And, and watching clips and interviews with him, he seems very knowledgeable. He's got old head on his shoulders and I think they'll respond well. You know, if someone comes in and knows their stuff, I think you can get instant respect. Not even for bringing our youth players for I just think on the whole, 
they'll respond well to him. He talks about being, it was talking about being uh, the physical fitness and stuff, lots of stuff that I, I bought into just listening to him. I thought, yes, I like the sound of that. You know, and hopefully he'll toughen them uh, players up because um, I think some of them need it. And uh, we'll start playing some nice football, you know, uh, watching that side of it as well, which will which will be fucking amazing. Uh, we get excited, don't we, Dan, and then when we see fucking two, three, four passes strung together and everyone's off their feet and an amazement at this stuff, this football stuff, you know? So, um, anyway, yeah, it's exciting and I think probably probably the best pick out, probably the best pick out of the lot is what I was going to say. Uh, I'm just at the gym now, so the recording's going to sound completely different. A fat bloke out of breath now. Uh, but yeah, the best pick out of the lot, Joe Edwards, I think. And the more I think about it and listen to the comments with the uh, last show, it's quite exciting to be fair, let's be honest. I mean, it had gone stale and it overrow <laughs> it, so anything is like a breath of fresh air. But buying a new loaf of bread, do you know what I mean? Nice and fresh, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's hopefully now announce it today. And uh, onwards and upwards. Come on, you lions. Hi, Nick. John Hennigan here, uh, your novelty Millwall fan based up in the north. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have my two cents on the uh, the appointment or the uh, pending appointment of Joe Edwards. Um, I think it's a, it's a bold move. It's a left field choice. It's a uh, thinking outside the box, just to coin a few recycled cliches I've seen online about it. I think it's a really interesting one. And I don't think it's quite as risky as I think some people think it is. Um, listen, I don't think he's going to be on the biggest amount of money. Um, with him not having as much say in terms of transfers, you know that that will obviously play into that as well. Being a, being a head coach role instead of a manager, it allows him to uh, you know the opportunity to uh, to sort of focus more on the development side of it. And, and there's lots of development available, I think, in a lot of those players, uh, whether it be uh, the likes of sort of Billy Mitchell and um, Dan Ma- Danny McNamara. Um, along with the, the young lads as well and some of the loanees that we've uh, we've got out on loan at the moment. So all of those, I think, um, are really important. I think the difference in terms of with this particular appointment against somebody like Joe Edwards, uh, sorry, against Nathan Jones, is that I think the expectation will change and I think it needs to. Um, I don't, I think anybody who thinks we're going to be going for the playoffs this season needs to kind of probably rein that in because you're going to be disappointed. I think it's a transitional. For, I think it's going to be transitional for quite a while, if I'm honest. Um, and I think it's probably, you know, probably the end of this season and the next, where it allows the, a bit of a rebuild job. And I think we'll see some wholesale changes come through both in January and in the summer, um, and for a few windows forward from there as well. Hopefully, we'll get the best out of him. Um, and I'm certainly interested to see how he uh, how his style of play is because I certainly haven't got a clue right now what it will be. But fingers crossed, it will uh, it will all work out, and uh, we all can get behind him. So yeah, excellent. Take it easy, mate. Come on, you lions. Uh, morning, Nick. Um, and um, exciting news, I think, for us that Joe Edwards is about to be um, appointed. A few random thoughts, which I hope are of some interest to everyone listening. Um, the first is that I think he's got a season where not that much is going to be expected of, of him in terms of where we finish in the table. I think most of us would be prepared for mid-table respectability, certainly from where we are at the moment, uh, given that um, he's going to have to get to grips with the squad and he's going to have to work out what his best team is and how he's going to get on with the players. So that, I think, is probably a good thing um, for him. So he's got certainly time. And I think, surprisingly, Millwood fans are actually much more patient than people often give us credit for. The second thing is he's going to have to sort out the centre-backs. Um, Cooper and Hutchinson and Wallace, good, very solid players, but really don't play the ball out from the back at all very well. Um, I think we need Creswell back. I noticed he wasn't in the squad for Leeds on Friday. I don't think he's injured. Given his links with the England setup, it might well be a case of being able to tempt him back on loan, particularly if we're not challenging for promotion and Leeds don't see us as a threat. I think he'd be a really great... Um, um, addition for us and certainly somebody else who can play out from the back at centre back is required so that, that that is definitely going to be a priority I'm sure for him thirdly I thought the retention of Alan, uh, Adam Barrett I think is a good thing people have been critical of it but 
He doesn't know the players. Barrett clearly has the respect of the players. It was obvious on Saturday that with all the difficulties, they tried hard um, in, in terms of effort. There was no question about that. And I think that to retain Barrett is a good thing, certainly for the moment. I suspect he will be moved on at some point, possibly in the new year. But keeping him for the moment, I think, is a, is a good thing. Finally, I think Joe Edwards is a good appointment. I would have, wouldn't have minded Nathan Jones. I think he, he, he would have been interesting. But I think Joe Edwards is high risk, high reward. But I think it's a reward that uh, if we get it, could be fantastic for us. So let's keep fingers crossed. And as usual, let's, let's back the manager. Achtung, Millwall. No 